and get jobs. So you're highly welcome to the first edition of this session for this month. It's a pleasure to have you here. My name is Priscilla, like I mentioned, and I'll be your host for today. Before we get started, I'd like to meet everybody here on the call. So if you don't mind, you could just, um, unless I forget, I also have the um, Chief Operations Officer for Analytics here on the call with me, and we'll be doing this together. That's Chukwemeka right there on the screen. Right? Chukwemeka, do you want to say hi? Hi everyone, welcome to the call. All right, I uh, hope you stay to the end so that you get to you know understand everything that we're offering you today. All right, All right. cheers guys. Thank, now we're thank you so much. Um, so like I said, um, if this is your first time of joining a Analytics Masterclass session, please leave a one in the chat. If this is your first time of joining us for a session like this, leave a one in the chat, please. Let Let's get to meet the newcomers. Let's welcome you to Janice's iPhone. You're highly welcome. Bakare, Elizabeth, Daniel, Lik Likita, Isidami, Babatunde, Joe Drums. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I'm super, super excited. I'm very certain that this, this is going to be a blast, right? And I also like to know where you're joining us from. I'm joining in from Lagos, Nigeria. So you could just let me know where you are joining in from, right? Priscilla joining in from Lagos, Nigeria. Chukwemeka joining in from Lagos, Nigeria as well. So you might just want to... Um, Tell us where you're joining in from. Okay, we have somebody from Wari, from Lagos, Mombasa, uh, Lagos as well. So that's the beauty of sessions like this. You get to meet or be in the same space as people in different locations, right? And then you get to pick their brains and share a thing or two with them. So that's being said, um, you're highly, highly welcome. And I think it's high time we got started properly, right? So um, I'll share my screen. I will do a brief introduction of Tanalytics and who we are. I'll also um, introduce you into today's session properly and tell you why we are here and then we can get started into this session. So I'll share my screen right away and as soon as you can see my screen, do let me know. Thank you. So can everybody see my screen, please? If you can see my screen, please leave a warning in the chat. All right, thank you so much, Daniel. So yes, today's session is all about how Tanalytics helped me land a job in tech, right? So um, we'll go straight into what who Tanalytics are and what we do here at Tanalytics, right? So Tanalytics is an educational technology company, and we help Africans and people of the Black community learn premium tech skills by lowering the entry barrier into tech. So if you know what edtech firms do, they bring education to your doorstep and to your comfort zone, right? So you no longer have to go to schools to learn. You no longer have to leave your house right um, on your um, workspace, on your bed you can easily just you know log into a session and learn as you would in a conventional school so this is what we do here in analytics one educational technology company and we help africans and people of the black community learn premium tech skills how do we do this we do this by lowering the entry barrier into tech so all what you need to get started in tech is just uh, your laptop right and a stable internet connection and we've helped you lay down a structured plan that you could see through and that would also help you land a job in tech right so our service offerings are aimed at building capacity and understanding across different tech fields including data analytics business analysis data engineering data science financial analytics hr analytics scrum cyber security ai engineering and the entire data ecosystem right and, and this is to enable our clients achieve data driven decision all right so um we're able to do this we're able to help you learn or um, gain access into tech by employing the um, top professionals, right, as our facilitators, and they are usually from diverse sectors and reputable organizations, such as Apple, Microsoft, McKinsey and Company, Amazon, Deloitte, KPMG, and the likes. And like I mentioned earlier, our, our courses are structured in a way that makes it practical and ensures that you get optimal value, right? So, um, 
Next slide tells us about the founders of Tenalytics. We have Adesa Suleiman and Efimena Ipro. To my left is the founder of Tenalytics, Adesa Suleiman. He's a data analytics expert, and he has close to a decade experience in data analytics and management consulting, and he has personally trained over 8,500 participants, right? We also have Efimena Ipro. He's the co-founder of Tenalytics. He's a data science contractor, and he has experience in data analytics, data science, data engineering, and power platform development, right? So this is to tell you that um, you are in good good hands with Tenalytics, all right? So we're moving on to why we are here today and what we'll be doing today. So the first thing we'll be doing today is a chat with Tenalytics students who have gotten jobs after their training. So if you ever feel like, or oh, if I get to learn, how do I get a job? Do I get to have access to remote jobs? This is why we are here today. And if you're like me, get your notepad and pen to just take down a few points, right? That would be salient for you and that you would need to transition into tech, right? So the second thing we'll be doing today is um, telling you why you should choose a career in tech and where the opportunities are in tech, all right? The third thing we'll be doing is talking about our upcoming class, which starts um, next month, the second of next month to be precise. And then the fourth thing we'll be doing today is telling you about success stories of our participants, as well as a special discount for you, right? So the facilitators for today's session um, are myself and um, Chuke Mika, right? I'm a data associate at Analytics. And then Chuke Mika here with me is the chief operations officer at Analytics, right? So you get to meet us, you get to, you know, ask us questions, you know, and, as well as um, our, some alumni of Analytics today, right? So these are the amazing people that we have here in this session. We have Ini Akpabio is the CEO for Gridstack, right? Ini joined the data science um, program in October 2023, and he completed his training in January 2024. That was just last month. So he got a job as well last month, right? So we have FEA EJ, right? Um, she joined the data science um, program in April of 2023. She completed her training in July, and she was also able to land a job in October the same year. We also have Nathaniel, right? Nathaniel joined the data engineering program in July. Um, he completed his training in October, and he got a job in December as well. So these are the people people whose brain you'll be picking today, all right? So we get to ask them questions and then they get to, you know, share from their worth of experience and knowledge. So let's dive right into it. I'll stop sharing my screen now so that we can spotlight um, the speakers for today and we can get started into today's session. So um, hi, FEA, hi, Ini, hi, Nathaniel. Please, um, if you can hear me, you could just... Uh, Show us your face, right? Um, so we can get started, right? So that's Nathaniel there, that's FA there, and that's Amy there. Hi guys, good evening. Hi, 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 Priscilla. Good yeah, evening. Hope, good evening. I hope you're doing good. I'm very well. All right. Nice um, fine. Yeah, I'm very well as well. It's a pleasure to have you here. I can't wait to pick your brain myself, right? So um, we also have Nathaniel here. Hi, Nathaniel. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm very well. And you? I'm okay. Yeah. All right. It's it's a pleasure to have you join us today. And uh, yes, I'll be more than willing to pick your brain and learn a thing or two for myself. Right. So we also have FA. Hi, FA. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, Priscilla. How are you doing today? Very well. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. All right, all right. So um, it's actually a pleasure to have you join us today. So um, we'll be asking you questions, right? And then um, if there are also questions in the chat. So guys, to our listeners, if you have questions, you could just leave them in the chat. And um, at the end of the session, we could pick um, a question or two for the speakers tonight. So the first question will be, um, or the first activity will be for the speakers to introduce themselves. So I'll start with FA first. So FA, if you don't mind, you could just tell us a bit about yourself, you know, for a minute. Okay, yeah, nice to meet everyone here. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, I can hear you. 
Okay. Hey, uh, my name is F.A. and I am currently a business analyst. I work with uh, Aseco Nigeria, um, where uh, Nigeria is just a subsidiary of the company I work with. It's actually a European company and they have the branch here in Nigeria. So, um, uh, well, I don't have a lot to say, but I would just say that, yeah, I currently work um, as a business analyst uh, here in Lagos, Nigeria. And right. as this, as Priscilla said earlier, I also graduated um, from the business analysts program at Tenalytics. All right. Um, it's so good to meet you, Afi. All right. So, um, I can't wait to you know learn anything or two from you. So from you. So the next person is Nathaniel. Nathaniel, please just a brief introduction of yourself, right, and what you do. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathaniel. I have uh, a bachelor's degree in industrial chemistry from the Federal University of Technology, Accra. After which, I moved to Europe uh, to. Uh, study environmental sciences uh, for my master's degree. And upon completion, I also uh, studied data analysis with an American uh, boot camp. And then uh, it was later that I joined uh, analytics, in which I also studied data engineering. I got a job uh, last year, December, with uh, international. Uh, flavors and fragrance, which is an American uh, chemical industry uh, company. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about myself. And yeah, it's really nice to be here. All right. It's a pleasure to have you here, Nathaniel. Yeah. So yes, we're going to move on to any Hi, Ine. Do you want to tell us a bit about you and what you do as well? Uh, hi, uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, Priscilla, doing a great job. Mr. Right. Richard. Okay. Um. My name is Ine Iniak I have a BS in computer science, and um, I joined Tenalytics some years back, uh, some some months back rather. And uh, but before then, I've been in the um IT space um for about ten years. All right. I'm gonna be telling you about that. You know, yeah, for about ten years, but never knew what I wanted, and then I stumbled on Tenalytics and. Here we are. The story is different. I'm the CEO of uh, Stack, uh, Growth Stack. Okay, um, <laughs> it's a funny story. I'm going to tell you guys shortly. So let me not take your time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's all. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's good to really meet you, Ini, um, Nathaniel, as well as Effie. Right. So I'm going to ask Ini the first question. Could you like um share um how you got started in tech? Right. Can you hear me, please? very clearly all right so kindly share briefly your journey into tech and how it relates to your degree because you so you okay, could just so, let us do your degree influence your path the path you've chosen or you know just walk us through that yeah so um so many years back okay so um computer science computer engineering was in thing so that was when um, the mobile network operators were coming into Nigeria. So everyone wanted computer science, computer engineering. So I opted for, I actually wanted to go in for computer engineering, but something happened. So I couldn't meet up um, the, the max. And of course, you know how it feels in Nigeria. So I, I settled for computer science. And then, um, of course, after I graduated, got my first job, you know, sport engineer you know and then worked for a while i did i got another one um and then still support engineer okay side support engineer and then moved on to doing a whole lot okay um with the second company i mean a whole lot and then i got a business development manager role for um the company and of course, that was an IT business development manager role. So, and then I filled in the space and then, of course, did my stuff and then moved on to another company, right? There I was, and then something happened. Tenalytics came on board. So, uh, before then, okay, I never knew my worth, I must tell you. 
I never knew my worth. So my CV was, in fact, I didn't know my CV was was in was in the disarray. It was when I met Tenalytics, the whole story changed. In fact, um, the whole thing changed, and here we are today. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. You're you can mute. hear me, please. You yeah, you're me. muted. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. So I was saying that your journey is exciting to hear, and what excites me most is how Tenalytics has helped um, add a bit of flame to that, right? So I'm going to go to FA, right? FA, do you want to share? Um, how your journey into tech was and was your degree a deciding factor for you? Did it help you choose a path? <laughs> well, I would I would say my degree, okay, first of all, my first degree was I started studying microbiology, right? And <laughs> microbiology is very far apart from the role I'm currently uh, working at now. I started with microbiology um, for my first degree, but then I moved, I switched my course and decided to move into real estate. So my first degree was actually estate management. I graduated with estate management. Still has totally nothing to do with the current career path that I'm on. But then I decided to um, go for my master's and I decided to um, do business administration. It's still not a technical mm -hmm. role, but um, would I say maybe that sort of helped me to divert into business analysis. That's the business side of it, because when you talk about uh, a business analyst, there are two sides to it. There's the business part, and then there's the technical bit, but you still a part of the technical um, team, right? Uh, within the company or within the organization. So basically I would say that um, my degree to an extent did not really have a lot to do with my, um, with the current path. I mean, considering the fact that I started with um, real estate, but it was later on okay. that, uh, yeah, I decided, okay, I want to move into a tech role um, how can I move into a tech role? And that was when I stumbled upon Ten Analytics. So I would sort of say that Ten Analytics was actually the, the degree that I had to help me transition <laughs> into into the technical role. Yeah, because because even with the masters I had, it was still not enough to just um to just delve into what I'm currently doing. So, um, well, my degree, well, that's the history or the background of my degree. You can decide if it helps me. <laughs> if it helps me All in right. my current role, you can decide that or not. All right. Thank you so much for sharing, Effie, right? Um, yeah. Your story is quite an amazing one as well. And maybe to those of us listening, if you ever feel like I did a certain thing in school and I don't know if tech is for me, I don't know if I would find a path that suits me, maybe tonight will help you break that jinx, right? And you can as well... Um, make a decision to get into tech and you realize how much you fit in with your unique abilities, right? So I um, would also move to Nathaniel. Please, Nathaniel, do you want to share your journey into tech and how it relates to your degree? Oh, well, I am not going to sugarcoat anything. Uh, so I started my tech journey two, two years ago. And this was because I, I didn't have brain. I would say that, of course, I have like an industrial chemistry degree, and I also got an Erasmus Mundus scholarship uh, to study in Europe for two years. Uh, and upon graduation, I realized that uh, I was stranded, and then I needed a job to be able to, you know, transition like uh, from student to work, uh, to have the work permit in Europe, and then. I would say that with my industrial chemistry uh, degree and my environmental sciences degree, I only I was only able to attend 
or, or secure one interview with a particular company uh, in Europe. And that was an internship. He didn't even get the, 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 the role. And he don't upon me that, well, well, if I am unable to get something, I would have to go back to my country. And and a friend of mine told me about like this tech company in the US and then I was able to uh, enroll and then get uh, a data analysis uh, degree there. There, upon completion, of course, I was trying to have different uh, jobs. I was trying, but I couldn't uh, get any, any offers. And then I, I, I concluded uh, the degree at around June 2023. And uh, one time I was scrolling through Instagram and then I saw analytics um, on, on the guy's page uh, with advertising analytics. And then I decided to just click on the link and then join the WhatsApp group. So I was able to attend one of the session and then I realized, oh, upon seeing what they were able to offer in terms of helping you uh, with the interview, like to try and help you uh, have the interview stage. So I was able to, uh, okay, I said I was going to uh, enroll in the data engineering because of course I already had the data analysis and then I wanted to know better, you know, the back end of the data. So I joined, uh, I joined uh, July and then in two weeks I got uh, a job so we saw a particular pharmaceutical company, but I was Hi. unable to start because, uh, and before before I got the job, of course, I was able to, analytics really helped me in terms of uh, uh, preparing me for the interview. I knew about it uh, at first uh, when, I, when I joined analytics, so they were able to help me, and then I was able to have the interview. So um, this has been my, my journey so far, but yeah. All right, it's quite an interesting one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. So I think um, my next question is going to go to FA. I don't know, FA, are you still here with us? All right, so I think- Yes, I, I am. All right, all right, good. So um, my next question says that, what did you take into consideration before choosing a tech career path, right? So you met analytics, what did you take? What was the deciding factor for you? Um, mm, I would say for me, the deciding factor was um wanting to do something, wanting to do something uh much more innovative because in my line of work, it sort of uh comes with bringing up solutions, bringing up uh technical solutions for businesses. So yeah. I knew that. I came across uh, the, I think it was an advert I came across and then I attended a master class just like this one. I've forgotten who the speaker was, but I remember he was in the UK and he sort of walked us through a typical um, business analyst situation or scenario. And that was when I knew that this was what I wanted to do, right? He, um, there was he gave us a problem. I I can't really pull all the problem was off the top of my head, but he gave us a problem. Yeah, it was something about COVID and how we can reduce the uh delivery or the wait time to um to um to to, to how to reduce the wait time that uh customers went through in order to receive their packages, and uh I participated during this session that we had and I sort of knew that it was for me and mm -hmm. I I was you know I was just answering questions <laughs> I was just answering questions during the master class session and that was it it was like okay FA you wanted you've always wanted to um to come up with uh, technical solutions and this is the chance you've been able to sort of um, prove that you could do it so why don't you just register for this course and for me, that was the deciding um, um, factor. And here I am in a masterclass session. 
sharing your story. Isn't that really, really nice? Right. So um FA joined a masterclass, right? And we literally helped her decide what career in tech she wanted to go for. And here she is, more like giving back to the community, coming to share her story as well. Right. So um that same question would go to Amy, right? What did you um take into consideration? Like what was the deciding factor for you? Sorry, Ini, you're muted. I'm sorry about that, please. Yeah. No problem. Thanks. All right. So uh, for me, the MNOs were coming into Nigeria at the time. Okay. So I, I decided to hop in. And um, mm -hmm. however, for over 10 years, I never knew where I was heading. Yes, I never yeah. knew. I I became aware of who I was, okay, where I was heading. And um, of course, what I needed to get there, all right, when I joined Analytics. All right, um, I was, I actually attended a, a ceremony um, somewhere in this, uh, outside of Lagos. And um, when I saw the, uh, I saw the advert on, on WhatsApp, so on, sorry, on um, Facebook. And then I said, okay, um, I like this, okay. Before then, I'd actually searched, or I searched the internet, okay. I saw something, oh, computers, uh, data science, um, data analytics, and all of those. So, and then that session started 5 p.m. that very Saturday evening. So I joined, I was my way back to Lagos when I started all the way from 5 p.m. and I got to the house for four hours. The session was on and I was there. I was so, I was so happy I joined. I had everything I needed to hear. And then, um, while the session was on, just like this, I they said, oh, if you make payment today, blah, blah. I made the initial payment. The session was on, right on. And I sent, did the first transfer. And then I was waiting, like, okay, guys, I could, just couldn't wait. It was counting down. Two weeks to the beginning of the cohort. And then, um, uh, like if it said, I, I never knew I was going to be one of those guys will be sitting on the other side to advise people, guys, yeah, look at analytics and look at it very well. <laughs> that's the <Right>? place to be. <laughs> that's, that's so, so, so interesting, right? So for somebody that already, um, that had um, a couple of uh, years experience already, with analytics brought self-awareness. If you're with your notepad and pen, you should actually be taking these things down, right? So we not only help you decide what career path to go into, we don't help you decide that's the good thing. We take you through, we walk you through the process for every career path, and then you get to make the decision yourself. And then if you already have experience, we ensure that you become self-aware, you know what you carry in you and how much you can give, how much value you can deliver just like any. So yes, um, thank you so much for sharing. Any, my next question will be to Nathaniel, right? How did Analytics prepare you for your first job, right? What was the interview preparation like? You know, what was the contribution to the success of um, you landing a role like? Oh, well, uh, I would say they had like a very great contribution, uh, to be honest. Like I said before, I had a master's degree in data analysis uh, with an American bootcamp, but I couldn't have the interview stage. And then uh, this was like a real problem for me because uh, with the degree, I couldn't even get a job. So I after I joined uh, analytics and then I got uh, uh, my first interview stage and of course uh, before that analytics had explained to us that if you have like any interview you could uh, just reach out to them and then they will help you in you know with uh, like a mock interview stage and then I reached out to uh, Mohammed. Uh, he was really nice. In fact, he, he took his time to explain because I, I applied to, it was like a data analysis role. And then he took his time. And then I also told him that the company, like it's a physical company. And he took his time to draft some similar questions that I could, uh, that I could expect during the interview. And then he told me about the fit approach, uh, like the, the skills, the experience, the uh, achievements, and then the traits. That was my first time of, of hearing that. 
it took me through this process and I will tell you that this changed everything that I was looking for because right now I've attended uh, a lot of interviews after that but I would say my conversion rate now moved from say 0% to about 75% in having say the first second stage of interview because right now with any with any uh, recruiter, I would always pass to the next stage because I have the, the basic understanding now on how to have this, this stage. So he was able to help me have, uh, understand the things that you have to say, how to say, how to say it and how to respond to this question. So uh, I would say that the analytics has really helped me to be honest, uh, except I would be lying. And then this is my second job. I was unable to start the first job because I wasn't, I uh, didn't even have like the work for me that I mentioned that earlier and then they, they gave it to another person. So now I got another role as a business analyst with, uh, they are ready to sponsor my visa with a very good pay grade, everything. So, so yeah, I'm really happy that I took that full step in joining analysis. Yeah, I'm really, really, really excited for you, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 your story is also <laughs> one fantastic, yeah. right? So um I'll also be asking any that same question. Any out there the training prepare you for your current job role? Could you walk us through the interview preparation you got from Tanalytics and how it was helpful, you know? All right. Now um let me let me just quickly say that um an hour is not enough for me to talk about all I have gained from Tenalytics. Okay. <laughs> One day is not enough, right? Not enough. A whole day is not enough. So I could tell you for like one week, two weeks, one month. Yes. So now the thing is this, um, for Tenalytics, all right. Um, from day one, from day one, I knew I knew that something was different about these guys. Okay, because prior my my beginning the training, okay. I've done a lot of I've been I've been 10 years in tech, all right. So I've done a lot of trainings here and there. I have certificates to show for them, but I couldn't um stand before um I, I didn't know how to put them together, right? I had a lot of things scattered here and there. I didn't know how to put them together. And then all of the session that we had, besides the regular Saudi um live classes, we had um of course the Thursday mentor, mentor, men, mentorship sessions. We had um, the Wednesday, just like this, and then a whole lot. So I was able to harness this time, okay, these um, resources together, all right? Um, the CV um, optimization session, the LinkedIn. So I had, I took my time, okay, went into LinkedIn, revamped myself. When I looked at my CV and I said, wow, I dumped my initial CV. I picked up a new one and I started afresh, right? So before then, I tell you that I could stay for a whole year, two years, three years without attending one interview. I sent my CVs for jobs, you know, openings. I never got a call, a call, not even a message say, oh, um, to the next stage. But in... January 2024, everybody mark my word, please. In January, between January 2nd and and um, last, okay, um, 2nd of, Feb of February, I have had more interviews attended than I have ever had in my entire career. Wow. Okay, <laughs> now let me also let me also tell you, yeah, between January 2nd and then I have all the emails on, in my box, okay? So I, I know I'm talking about between in one month, right, I've had I've attended a lot of interviews than I've ever attended in my entire life because I took my time, looked at my CV, looked at my LinkedIn, and I pushed it out. A lot of people started looking looking up to see who I was, you know, on LinkedIn. Prior to that time, nobody wanted to connect with me on LinkedIn, right? And then I tell you that I I didn't apply. Okay. Now, let me tell you this. I didn't apply for the role of CEO for the company. All right. Get it right. Yeah. I applied for a different, a lower, in fact, there was two, like two rounds from the CEO. So I would rep report to somebody who reported to the CEO. And then mm -hmm. the, the, the employing team saw my CV and interviewed me for that role of a manager. And 
they booked another time with me and then that was when they broke the news say boy we have seen your cv and we think that you deserve to become the ceo and i was lost you know i was like what's happening here they said no uh, we <laughs> think you have what it takes to become the CEO. yes that was how it happened so I tell you, analytics are miracle, miracle workers. I'm if, blown if away, me. like really. <laughs> yes, I'm that was completely happen, yeah. blown away. Right, so guys, yes, this is somebody it. with a lot of experience, right? And then, when you know, have you heard of the phrase "follow no road"? Right, we've helped you lay down a structured path. All you have to do is just do your part of the deal, right? Show up for yourself. That's all. We've you know laid down the steps for you to take to land a job and all you need to do is just play your part and you will be somewhere here like um um not in is sharing stories as well like really really fantastic story thank you so much Ine. so i'll be going to fa fa could you also let us know how the training helps prepare you for your um the, for your current job you know the sessions the extra sessions and all of that I would say the training, in fact, it was it was the major factor in me getting my job because not even in me landing the interview, not even not even um in my current role, but in me in me actually getting the job because the training session, yes, I had a training session, especially the um the business analysis session that we had where we had um we had a particular speaker then it was okay he was our um he was our uh, teacher then and um i would say that i was able to sort of participate actively in the class so it's not just about signing up for the session and paying money you have to make sure you actually want to gain something from uh, what you paid for you need to get value right. for what you subscribed for yes so I I participated actively and sort of that gave me a lead way in the sense that I was sort of I became close with um, the speakers and with the teachers in uh, the class right so I could approach them when I needed help when I needed clarity um, as pertaining probably Power BI or SQL or SQL or um, any past class scenario, you know, that I had issues with. So, and this came in very handy during my interview. Okay, I got a job. I, um, I got called back after I applied with my CV, but then my interview, <laughs> in fact, I, I didn't even know how to begin or where to begin from. Because it's like you're looking for you're looking for a really um experienced person, but see me that did microbiology <laughs> and did real estate. How am I supposed to compete? So I had I I went back to my mentor. I went back to Ofer. He was the one that took us business analysis program then. So because I sort of he knew that I participated actively during his sessions during the business analysis session. So I was I was actually able to get him to help me to um, do mock interviews with me. So I would say that was the, like that, that made a big deal, like a huge deal. So the fact that, the fact that I was able to participate actively during those sessions, the fact that I was, I decided that I wanted to get value, to actually get to get actual value from the session that was what helped me <laughs> in getting the job because if i didn't put myself out there if i wasn't serious then i don't think i would have even had the guts to to you know message my tutor or if he would he won't have even remembered me mm -hmm. but he remembered me he knew that i was always active in class that i was actually someone that wanted to learn so he helped me, I mean, in my interview process throughout everything, like every possible question they could ask me. He was the one that tutored me and mentored me, you know, getting the right answers to tackle those questions. So I think um, that's how the Tenalytics experience 
helped experience helped me in um getting my job. All right. Thank you so much for sharing, Effie, right? We really cannot downplay the importance of doing your part, like I mentioned, right? Effie did that, right, from beginning to end, and she's here now. So it's not really about just signing up, hearing all the amazing things and just signing up. It's really about you um, putting in the time. If you must have sleepless nights, please have sleepless nights, right? Just putting in the time and the effort, right, and showing up for yourself, basically. So thank you so much, Effie. My next question goes to Nathaniel. So Nathaniel, are there any major misconceptions you had, right, before um, Tenalytics or before your journey in tech? And what are your thoughts now? So we have misconceptions around age, you know, around your background, you know, all of that. Are there any um, misconceptions that you had? And now that you're here, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, Do those uh, misconceptions still hold? I think it's very common or normal to have some sort of mis misconceptions in the sense that if you're coming from a different background, uh, like I said, I have uh, I have a background in uh, industrial chemistry and then also in environmental sciences. And then I had a friend who was a business analyst with a very huge company in the world, and then she studied business analysis. And I was thinking for you to get into tech, of course, you have to have like the background in, in you must have gone to school to study to study like five years course Eight and all percent. that exactly so but then uh so getting into tech you know being part of it makes, makes you realize that you don't really need all these uh degrees to 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 actually be able to function what what these recruiters want is can you do the job in 2024 i don't really think but the job that I got right now, no one is asking me uh, which school did you graduate from or, okay. or the, no one is really, no one cares about your background. They want to know if you can, can do the job and if you're able to convince them that you're able to do the job. So this is what I, I came to realize due to uh, the fact that I've been in the system, you know, learning and then hard, but of course there's always been this conception that all oh, can I, can I really cope in this um, tech world? And most times when people hear data, they are scared because they, they think uh, it's like a lot of things that, you know, it's more than their ability. When they hear statistical analysis, they get scared, you know? Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you that this thing is uh, something that you can learn by yourself in, in your own apartment, just with your computer. And then you send, with someone in internalist, they're able to explain explaining to you how to do these things, how to manage data, how to analyze data, how to the ETL process, distraction, transform, loading. You are able to explain yeah. these things from the scratch to you and you're able to understand them. So yeah, it's I think it's normal if you're not uh, if you've not gone to and with the age age bracket to people get to be scared that oh uh maybe I am 30 something or 40 something or 50 and then I'm like uh, I think it's too late for me to get into technology because I'll be competing with younger age but the truth is no one like the job I also got now they didn't ask how old are you before when I was applying no one asked so uh, the thing is it's not too late for you to, to start you can start right now and then I'm pretty sure that you will get that job that you really want to get. So it's it's okay to have misconception, but uh, the thing is, what are you doing? You have to yeah. get uh, knowledge and, and, and read about these things and then don't let them scare you. All right. Thank you so much, Nat. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. sharing. This, right. So if you ever feel like, well, I'm too old. I've been working as a civil engineer for like 30 years and I'm about retiring. I'm thinking of getting into tech. I don't know if it's for me. I don't know how to use a computer. I just know how to, you know, touch my mouse and see movies on my computer. Don't worry. Tenalytics is the right place for you, right? It'll take you through the process, you know, a well-structured plan and process, right? So my final question, so I just have a final question. If you've got maybe a question, you could leave that in the chat and we could just take one question. But my final question um, goes to all three of you, right? So I'll start from Amy first. So what advice would you give to somebody considering going into the same 
um, tech career path as you, what advice would you give? So I'll I'll say that um, the best time to join the class would be last year or ten years back. So the next mm -hmm. best time best time is now. So yeah. do not waste time. One more minute wasted, you probably regret it for the rest of your life. That's right. Yes. All right. Thank you so much that's, for sharing that's that. Nice. Thank you, thank you. So, so don't, so don't, don't ju just um if you if you're considering getting into tech and you're thinking when do I begin, right? So now, like Nathaniel said, is the next be best time to get started, right? So thank you so much, Ini. Sorry, thank you so much, Ini. So um, Effie, what advice would you give to somebody that is willing to get into the same um career path as yourself? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would, I, two things, I would say um, hard work and persistence. Yes, um, Ini already mentioned the best time to join is now, and that's very correct. Even after you join now, you have to put in the hard work. You have to be make, you have to make sure that you're actually ready to go the extra mile and persistent. You might finish the program you might not get a job immediately but you have to make sure that you keep trying i mean you have to focus on your internship you have to um probably sign up for internships like online remote internships i did one with accenture i was just going from different internship to internship not because i i had all the time but because I know I had gotten knowledge from analytics, I wanted it to stay in my head. I didn't want it to disappear. I wanted to remember, you know, everything I had learned. So I just wanted to keep my head fresh, keep all the knowledge fresh. So I was persistent. And, you know, with that, you sort of stay guided. You're staying grounded. It sort of prevents you from, from just giving up you know, when you don't get that job immediately. So hard work and persistence for me. All right. Thank you so, so much for sharing with us, F.A. Um, it's a pleasure to actually pick your brain. Say the um, final person will be Natania. What advice would you give to somebody willing to delve into the same career path as yourself? Oh, well, uh, so what separates you from, because trust me, a lot of you will be joining the class and then we start to see that some people are really serious and then some people are just here to, you know, while away time. But what separates you is yourself. You know, you know, like I take myself as an example. I know that I didn't have the background. So what do I do? I took my time, a lot of my time is studying. So whenever uh, we have been taught something in class, I go back, sleepless nights, a uh, lot of uh, apart from apart from analytics teaching you personally, you have to go ask questions because they always trust me. They always say if you have any question, ask them. They are ready to to even if you wake them, maybe that's a joke. Two a.m. I write to them, they will probably answer. <laughs> that's a joke. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want analytics will give you a platform, but it's left for you to build on that platform and then to design it yourself and. To see how you're able to improve us by yourself and then and let God take the rest. All right. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. Thank you, Ini. Thank you, Effie. So, um, sorry about that. I think there's so much jubilation, right? So thank you so much um, for coming to share with us tonight, Ini, Nathaniel, and Efe. It's a pleasure to pick your brain and also to get to hear your experience and um, other tech career paths. Um, so we're going to move on to the next aspect of the session. Um, Nathaniel, I mean, Chikemeka, my colleague, is going to take you through what the um tech career opportunities are and why you should as well choose a career in tech, right? So thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Priscilla, for that wonderful session. Thank you, Effie. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you, Amy. And thank you to everyone that have been on the call so far. It's us. I don't know, you may, you may hear um, a bit of noise in my background because uh, I don't know what's happening outside there, but people are excited, right? And I want you to also be excited for being part of this exact session. 
And the truth is, um, by virtue of you being on this call at this exact hour, that means there is something um, incredible that you are willing to get that made you to, you know, leave everything that you're supposed to get outside there and be here with us at this moment. So, uh, so please um, just tell me when you can see my screen so that we can start immediately. All right. Okay. Please, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen. All right. I don't know. Here is too quiet. Uh, um, are, are we still on the call? Please, if you've been with us all this while and you've learned something uh, incredible and you are still with us at this moment, please just type a one in the chat box so that I can know that you are still flowing with us. Let me know that I'm not talking to just um, Priscilla. Let me be sure that I'm talking to everyone. So please, if you are still with us and you have, you've been following all this while, just type a one in the chat box so that I'll be sure that we are all together in this exact moment. All right, okay, I can see a couple of more in the comment section. Fantastic, fantastic, or oh, that's amazing. Great one, fantastic. All right, without wasting much of our time, right? We've heard a lot from Effie, from Nathaniel, and from Amy. And um, these are people that transitioned, I think it's only um, Amy that have been in the tech ecosystem before now. but. Uh, Someone is typing so <laughs> that's fine. All right, I think it's only um Ini that have been in the tech ecosystem before now, right? But people like Effie, people like Ini, people like Nathaniel, I mean, they've not really been in that tech ecosystem, right? They transitioned from um different things, from microbiology, from environmental um science, right? And they got to enter into tech. And there are things that were motivating them, they had motivating factors. I think for um for, for Effie, she mentioned that she wanted to be we are uh, part of innovation, right? She wanted to see what she created come to life. So for you, I want you to just type what's motivating you to try to transition into the tech ecosystem. Just type it in the chat box. Is it the um, work-life balance? Is it the money? Is it like um, FE that you want to have um, the innovative aspects? Just type in the chat box anything that is motivating you to want to transition to this tech ecosystem. Just type it in the chat box. because. When you try to get into this industry, there are going to be turbulent time, right? But is that your motivating factor? That initial thought that you had in your head that said, I want to be in this field. That's what's going to keep you going. So I want to sit in the chat box. I want to see what your own motivating factor is. I think, okay, I'm seeing Frederick's own. Frederick said um, financial freedom. Fantastic one, Frederick. That's an amazing um, motivating factor to have. I'm sure... Um, 90% of people that want to be bought into tech, they are motivated by the money, right? So I want to see what everyone is. Okay, um, oh, Paolo, I said innovation and freedom. Buddha said to be important. Clement said innovation and financial interest. Um, iPhone, I know that's not your name, said I have it. Okay, that's different. Um, Cesar said working remotely. So without wasting much time, let's dive into it. Everything that we said is perfectly right, right? So I'm just going to touch base with some things that you are going to take as your own motivating factor that will push you even when the going gets tough. So that you will always say, oh, I want to see this to the logical end. Number one is great work-life balance, right? We all agree that with the advancement of tech during COVID, companies now started pivoting towards working remotely. I myself, I'm, I'm in Nigeria and I'm working across, I'm, work, I'm talking to you guys that in UK, I'm talking to people in Canada, I'm talking to people in US. And it's because of this great work-life balance and flexibility that tech offers, right? And also, we have the growing job opportunities. On an annual basis, the, the percentage of the share that technology takes with respect to hiring keeps growing because all companies want technological advancements, right? Even if it's bank that is hiring, even if it's uh, fintechs, they always push to get all those technical guys because these are people that is going to push their products, that's going to make them well-known. And of course, you don't really need a tech degree to be in this field. That can also be a motivating factor. You don't have to be, um, okay, let me study cybersecurity analysis before I can be a cybersecurity um, expert. I think if you also mentioned that the degree that she needed to switch to, um, you know, um, tech is analytics, right? She studied a different course, but she, the degree that she needed to pivot to tech is analytics. And this took her how long, how long? Just a couple of months, three to four months, and she switched. And also, Maybe you can be someone that is moved by the money, right? Most of us, we enter tech, tech because of the money. We want to where the money is. Everybody say tech is the new oil, right? And that's the truth, right? Because, because of the increased demand of these tech roles, 
um, demand is making the um, the pay to also rise um, side by side. If there are um, maybe 30 data analysts and there is demand for 60 data analysts, definitely the, the pay for those 30 data analysts that is currently existing will also um, increase, right? And like someone also mentioned in the chat box, the innovation. Some people want to be at the heart of innovation. I want to be at the heart and make things happen, right? I want to be able to say in tomorrow, okay, I'm the one that, you know, gave birth to this product that's in the market. There are some products that we as a company, FinTech, when we push it into the, into the market and people are using it, we are comfortable to say, yes, this is my work that you guys are using. So everything that you've had in your head, just take note of these five things and choose a motivating factor. Take it as something that when the going gets stuck, this is the reason why I want to be here. Because like, like someone also mentioned in the, in the chat, that it's not always juicy, right? It's not always fun. You have to do the work. Yeah, um, we'll have sessions for you, classes for you, but it's still you that put in the work to be in those classes. You put in the work to stay up at night to watch your videos. You, you put in the work to be, to be able to attend the mentorship sessions, CV review sessions, and upwork review sessions. If you don't do the work, you will not get to your um, you know, definite end. Now, one thing I also want to share is to bring to our attention where the opportunities are in tech, right? You know, sometimes people want to switch and um, by virtue of then switching, you might want you, you might be switching to a, a a course that will take you maybe years to be able to land a job, right? But what we've done here at Analytics is to do research for you and bring this research to you so that you can easily make all those decisions yourself, right? So number one thing I want us to take note: this is um what the economic, economic forum reports, right? So what the economic forum what they do is that on annual basis, you know. They bring out reports with respect to these are jobs that are going to be in high demand um, going into the next um, decade. And these are jobs that are going to decline, right? So if you look at the left-hand side, you are going to see jobs that are going to be in high demand. These are jobs that are going to grow, right? Let me see if I can write on this screen. Okay, I think that's taking a while. All right, if you look at the right-hand side, you see jobs that are going to decline. Why, if you look at the left-hand side, you see jobs that are going to grow. Now, the number one thing you are going to see here is AI and machine learning specialists. And do you agree with me that AI has been the most innovative thing um, in the past few years, right? Almost everything we are doing these days, it's AI inclined. If you are working in the bank, you are hearing stories of, okay, there's drop bots coming in. If you are in the tech ecosystem, you are even using um, things like chat GPT to optimize um, your codes and all. So basically, AI is something that is going to be in demand going into the coming years. And if you've not really pivoted to this angle, that means you're not doing something right at the moment. Another job that is definitely going to grow is also business intelligence analysts, right? Business intelligence analysts. I want you to take note of all the um, you know, jobs that I am highlighting, right? Because we've gone through the, we've done the hard work for you. We've seen the jobs that are going to grow and we've highlighted the ones that you have ease to transition into, right? It's one thing to have knowledge. It's one thing to also know how do I apply this knowledge? And this is something that we've done for you. So business intelligence analysts, what do they do? Um, I use the banking industry, for example, now. If they have things like, um possibly queue in the banking hall, and then a business intelligence analyst walks in and his own job at that moment is, okay, how do I optimize what's currently happening here so that I can make this banking hall to easily flow, right? So he's going to apply intelligence and analyze everything that's happening in the business and help the business to grow. And that is basically what a business intelligence analyst is there to do. And of course, we have the information security analysts. Information security analysts are basically um, a derivative of cyber security, right? So when we hear information security, it still has to do with cyber security. Now, in the growing world, with all the companies advancing, there is one thing that we all of them have in common, and that is data, right? All companies generate data. All companies store data. All companies work with data. And these data are sensitive data, right? If, for example, um, you have uh, maybe your history of um, your work history with your company, your children, your bio data, everything, these are sensitive data. And it's the responsibility of the organization to protect this data. 
And these are things that an information security analyst is going to help the company to achieve, right? It's going to make sure they protect the company from um, hackers and also make sure that he defends the company data from threats. And that's what information security analysts are doing. And by virtue of all these other jobs existing, there will always be demand for somebody to make sure that the data they are using are safeguarded. And of course, we have data analysts and data scientists. These are jobs that constantly will be in demand because a data analyst is somebody that looks at um, the data that the company has brought forward and asks the question of what happened, why did it happen? And then the scientists will now come in and say, okay, if we do not do this and do that, that means in two years time, this is going to happen. So they are answering the questions of what happened, why did it happen, and what will happen. Basically, diagnostic analysis, um, descriptive analysis, diagnostic analysis, and then prescriptive analysis. And basically, these are things that will always be in demand. The number five of jobs that are going to be in demand is uh, data engineers. Because for this data to be existing in the first place, somebody has built the ecosystem, somebody has built the pipeline. So who are data engineers? Basically, and what we refer to them here at analytics are, they are like plumbers, right? We know who plumbers are, plumbers in our normal buildings that help to connect maybe our sink to um, the wastewater and then to the um, tank itself. These are what data engineers do in the data ecosystem. They sort of connect the data from where it is to the database that they want it to be housed in. So that when the people working can easily um, type in, okay, um, star 555 star six hash and um, maybe your balance will come out. This is because somebody has built the pipeline to enable this to happen anytime you press a function. So that's what data engineers are there to do. Another one is database architects, which is closely related to data engineers, right? They are also there to build the pipelines to make sure that data are connected together and you can easily retrieve all this data when you want to get them. I want us to look at the right-hand side. I want us to have a closer look at the right-hand side before I move on. There is one job there that we all do not believe that this job is going to you know, be part of jobs that are going to decline, right? Nobody believes that this job is going to decline and that's the product, analyst, product managers, right? So I'm still going to tell you why these product managers are, at what economic forum is seen as jobs that are going to decline. Product managers, they are part of the jobs that are going to decline. I will still walk you through that. Just hang on with me for a while. So moving forward, still on the same left-hand side, you see other jobs that are also going to grow. And in this exact one, we have project managers, right? We have project managers. And project managers in this context are project managers that have advanced their own learnings from the initial waterfall framework to the Scrum methodologies, that's agile, right? And that's why product managers are becoming less in demand because there is a new, you know, there is a new Scrum master, there is a new leader coming into the town, right? And these are Scrum masters. They apply the Scrum methodologies to make sure they achieve um, what the company, each of those projects that the company is working on. And project management, management is basically, uh, we have the waterfall and they will have the agile. What are for people that make use of a traditional framework where uh, maybe you have to do your requirements gathering before you do your design. So there are step by step that before you enter to number two, you must complete number one. But then Scrum Masters came in, that's Agile, came in and said, okay, all these things can go hand in hand. We can be running these sprints and we can be doing all these things inside the sprints. That's why today you can see that maybe your mobile app, um, they've pushed a new update. And then before you know it, by next week, there's another update that's already there because they have all these things in sequence. They've already planned, done their sprint planning and have already inserted everything they want to achieve. So that's why project managers are growing in demand and product managers are declining because project managers that are um, you know, upskilled are now using Scrum methodologies, agile framework to apply to what they are doing. I hope that's clear. And that's um, going to make someone understand the importance of all this research that we've done for you. We also have the financial analysts, right? Financial analysts are basically people that come into the company and look at the historical data of the company. And they're able to, you know, do analysis and say, okay, 
um, if we build this model, if we um, do this, if we do that, this is where our financials are going to be, right? So they build predictive models that can easily tell the company what they want to do. And we, you agree with me that the main aim for most companies, their primary aim is to make um, a profit. And that's why financial analysts will always be in demand. They will make the company use informed data. Okay, for example, they want to do price change for a product. They're going to consult their financial analysts. Okay, what will happen if we decide to increase our price from $5 to $10, right? He's going, the financial analyst is going to build a model. And this model is going to be a dynamic one that is going to see, okay, once we do this, this is what's going to happen to our capex. This is what's going to happen to our complex. So by doing this, they will always be in vogue because companies always want to know what happened to our money. Where is the future of our money? They want that question to be answered. And this is why this program, a financial analyst, is very, very important. Right? I think um, Nathaniel mentioned in one of his comments that over the years, the, the interview he was able to attend just in one month is bigger than everything he attended over his career, right? And this is because after he was trained, because of the growing trends in the globe, there's constant growth, like they sent 2% skill shortage for tech guys. And this is what was reported by Tech Notion and Robots Half, right? Because of this skill shortage, there's always demand for anybody that have made themselves stand out. Right, and this is is not only peculiar to the UK UK ecosystem. Also in Canada, there are skill shortages, right? And of the thirty two jobs that um, immigrants got in twenty twenty three, Canada took fifteen thousand of them, right? And that's forty seven percent of that thirty two. And Nigeria came second, and they only scratched five percent of the available jobs because most of our people, most of our Africans, most of our blacks they are easily um they want to easily be in tech care um, the care industry in the construction industry places that they will not really have to put in the work right but if you put in just three months work you are going to learn amazing things that is going to make you be like effie going to make you be like nathaniel going to make you be like amy and that is why the analytics is here want to be able to help you transition and also according to mckenzie there has been growth of jobs in 2024. And the number one that is constantly going to be growing is data scientists and data analysts. And they have 5.5%, followed closely by cybersecurity analysts and data engineers, which basically has 5.2%. So I believe these are things that is going to make you know that these um, tech jobs are definitely not going to go out of vogue. You know, most times people will answer, um, okay, there are so many tech people out there, there are so many tech guys, data analysts, and that. Is, is the ecosystem not saturated? No, the ecosystem is not saturated. And I'm here to tell you that there is still enough skill shortage across the globe, in Africa, in UK, in Canada, everywhere there is skill shortage for tech, anal for tech guys. And that is what we want to be able to give to you so that you can be able to you know, land those amazing jobs that are out there. And why do people actually struggle to land jobs? Um, Nathaniel mentioned something that he didn't even know um, um, how to get all these jobs. Right? He studied um, data analysts in, uh, as a master's in, in Europe. But after it, he was still not able to get a job. And this is because the tech ecosystem works with one main standard. There's something that tech ecosystem prioritizes, and I want you to have it behind your head. And that's competencies competence over credentials, right? Competence over credentials. If tomorrow you do master's in DA, um, tomorrow you do PhD in DA, and you do not have that skill, that competence to do things hands-on, I'm sorry to tell you, but you will struggle to land a job. Because one thing that will always happen during your job interview is that once you've scaled the first phase, next one, they'll do you scale assessment. And these are places where the skill you have is assessed to make sure that, okay, you are a data analyst, analyze this data, you're a data scientist, use the um, predictive model to build something for us. You're a data engineer, script a website for us and be able to give us something. So basically, your skill will be something that will always speak for you. And people struggle to learn just because they put the cart before the horse. And putting the cart before the horse is just like 
getting certificates, doing a lot of things, and neglecting getting that skill initially, which is the number one step that you have to take. Another reason why we also struggle to get jobs, basically, we've trivialized job application. Once you go to LinkedIn, the job application side, you see easy apply, easy apply. And with that same one CV that you have, that same one CV that you have, if you apply for a BA role, that's business analysis, you apply for a data analyst role, you still use it to apply for a data engineering role, you still use it to apply for so many things. And that is why we struggle to land jobs. It's very, very important to know that you need to tailor your CV to every application that you are making. And that is how you can easily land jobs. And these are things that we are going to give to you if you join Tenalytics. We are going to teach you how to tailor your CV. So at any point that you see vacancies, you can easily do job match and be able to fit the requirements of the job that is currently being advertised. And another one is zero interviewing skill. Nathaniel also mentioned that during his own time that he had interview prep sessions, which are things that we offer. We will teach you, okay, once you walk into an interview um, place and you are asked, tell me about yourself. Is it time for me to say, oh, my name is Chukwe Mekai, but my dad is this, my mom is this, I live there. No, interviewers do not want to hear that. When they ask, tell me about yourself. What they want to hear is who is in front of them. And there's this um, framework that we normally use, which is the SEAT framework. And basically, they're going to answer who you are using skill, right? They're going to use skill. They're going to use um, um, qualifications. They're going to use your achievements. And you're going to use your traits, which is the type of person that you are. So basically, use the SEAT approach to answer this question. And once you're able to master it, you can easily pass any interview that is before you. So once you're asked, okay, Chukwe Mekeba, can I call me to you? Hi, my name is Chukwe Mekeba. I'm a skill that I have close 10 years experience in data analysis. I've helped companies to reduce their cost from 10% to 10% because I analyze their cost experience data. So basically, you can easily sell yourself at this point, right? And these are things that you can easily get when you join Tenalytics. Mm -hmm. And remember I told you that we have jobs on the left-hand side, which is going to grow and you have jobs on the right-hand side that are going to decline. Then on the left-hand side, we went order to select key jobs. We highlighted it with red to select some jobs for you. And these are jobs that you have easy to learn. They are very, very easy to learn. You have ease of transition. So if you want to transition from a law career to maybe a business analyst, it's easy for you. And also they have ease of getting job and of course, high and rewarding salaries. So that's why we've selected all those jobs in front of you. The eight jobs that we selected, which is in front of you right now, because they have ease of learning, ease of transitioning and getting um, um job, and then high rewarding um, financials with respect to it. And these jobs are business analysis, data analytics, financial analytics, HR analytics, full stack data science, scrum master, data engineering, engineering and of course cyber security we also have the ai which we selected but it's something that in the coming months we are going to roll into the market but at the moment these are the four programs that we offer here here as the analytics right and i'm going to just a brief thing just walk us through the average um, salary that these guys earn across the globe right in uk in canada and possibly in US, so that it can motivate you to make that move, right? So a business analyst in UK earns average salary of 52,000 pounds. In Canada, they get as high as 74,000 Canadian dollars. And then US, they get 55,000 US dollars. And data analysts earn as high as 40,000 pounds. In UK, in Canada, they get as high as $64,000. And in US, they get $72,000, right? Then financial analytics, they earn as high as 51,000 pounds. Then in Canada, they get as high as $69,000 um, yes, $69, and in the US, $74,000. Then HR analytics, they gain as high as £32,000. Then in Canada, they gain as high as $71,000 and in the US, as high as $72,000. And you are free to fact check us, right? You can easily Google what's the average um, salary of a business analyst in the UK, in Canada, and the US. And you are going to see these are figures that is right in front of you because we've done the research and we are here to give it to you. 
And of course, um, for data science, the same thing applies. In UK, they earn as high as 55,000 pounds, in Canada as high as $94,000, and in US as high as $121,000. Then the Scrum Master, which I consider the easiest part to enter into the tech ecosystem, the Scrum Master, the easiest part to enter into the tech ecosystem, they earn as high as 52,000 pounds, $74,000 in Canada, and 85,000 US dollars. And for data engineers, which are um, a little bit higher, they earn 65,000 pounds in UK. And then in Canada, they earn as high as $102,000 and then US dollars of 134,000. Then cybersecurity, of course, also earn 140,000 Canadian dollars, 105,000 US dollars and 57,000 UK pounds. Now, these things always seem impossible until it's possible. I know if somebody told um, Amy that he's going to um, be a CEO for a company, he's not going to believe it, right? Even at the point that they've told him, hi, Amy, would like to, to consider you for this other role instead of the one you came for. He still didn't believe it. But all these things are possible. And we have a couple of stories, a couple of um, you know, testimonials from our past students to guide you, to be able to tell you these things are possible to achieve, right? If you think, okay, you can't really transition, that it's hard, just look at these stories in front of you. Someone like Toyin, Toyin landed his job as a benefit analyst as, um, in the UK with NHS, and this gave her full sponsored visa, of course. And also, um, Tosin also landed a job in UK as a fraud analyst, and this is after we helped him with interview preps. And Bwenga, Bwenga landed a full-time role as a business data analyst with Lord Depot in Canada after training with us. And for them, Wenger's story is really, really, really very, very amazing because we walked Wenger through his um, interview processes. He got so many interviews that I think he got like four offers after his interviews that he had to sit down and say, okay, let me weigh my options and be able to choose the one I want. Now, this thing sound, um, sound like it's not possible, but it is possible, which is why we brought three people out of these guys to initially talk to us so that we can see that it is possible. I'm sure if I came here earlier and said, oh, someone here might be able to go for a manager role interview. And from there, instead of getting the manager role, they're going to look at your CV, look at the skills that you acquired and say, no, Supermaker, we don't want you to be the manager anymore. We want you to be the CEO. Nobody's going to believe that, but this is something that happened to Ini and he, he's been here to show us, to be able to tell us that these things are possible. So uh, before the class is over, I'm going to play one of the videos of all these things, um, our past participants, our past um, you know, alumni, so that we see what they we are going to say. The story that I always like uh, playing is the story of Ikmat, because she was able to transition from a full-time housewife to become a data analyst with full sponsored visa in the UK. Now, her story is very, very amazing because uh, when we hear full-time housewife, that means this person has been a housewife for close to two to five years at home, and she was able to move from that situation into becoming a full data analyst with sponsored visa in the UK. Okay, on the screen, I know you guys can see Nathaniel that also got a job after um, he trained with us, and he also came here to testify. So what we do daily on some uh, occasions is to bring all these people to our, um, our master classes so that they can speak to you and you will hear it directly from the horse's mouth. So remind me before the class is over, I'm going to play one person's um, video so that we can see that these things are not rocket science. It always seems impossible until it is possible, right? Okay, I'm just going to jump right in and tell us about the programs. Like I've already, already told us, of all these courses on your screen right now, business analysis, data analytics, financial analytics, HR analytics, data science, Scrum Master, data engineering, cybersecurity, which one do you want to pivot into? Just type it in the chat box. Tell me the one you are drawn to so that I will know how I will guide and talk through the next phase of what I'm going to say right now. So in the chat box, just drop the jobs you, you are attracted to from everything that I've been saying, which one do you want to pivot into? All right, I'm seeing a couple of data analytics. I'm seeing data analytics, data analytics, business analytics, data analytics, business analysis, cybersecurity. Fantastic one, fantastic choices. I'm sure 
we've all weighed our options and we've all said, okay, this is the reason why I want to be a data analyst or this is that. Data analyst, financial analyst, I think Clement is still in between. He's still not sure they want to um, select and they will have data engineering, cyber security. Fantastic form. The truth is that everybody on this call have selected something within these four, within these eight courses. And that's amazing, right? Um, because what people most times do is that they've seen all those jobs that's going to grow in the coming years that World Economic Forum has reported. And they still go ahead to select courses that is going to take them years to learn, courses that is going to take them years to transition. And there's, th there's what we call um, learning fatigue, right? There's a lot of um, data you're going to take into yourself and you're going to be so tired that you, you are going to, you know, stop learning at that point. But all these eight courses that we've selected are things that within three to four months, you complete everything and you become a fully, a, a full expert in that area. Now, how can you transition into any of these career paths, right? How can you transition into any of these career paths? I'm going to walk us through it one after the other because we've all selected everything here. Some people selected business analysis, some selected data analytics. So I'm going to walk us through all of them one after the other. Now, this is a business analyst. And what a business analyst does basically is to be able to you know, be the bridge between the business stakeholders and the technical teams, right? It's going to ensure that communication is easily flowing, right? A business analyst will, you know, work with developers, work with analysts, and be able to communicate what is going on, and then pass this message to the stakeholders, which is the CEO, the CFO, or the um, or the O's that we know, right? So he's there to make sure that all the information and everything that is needed, that he knows how to do it. And what are the things that you're going to learn as a business analyst? Basically, you're going to work with tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Lucy Charts, Confluence, Jira for um you know, um, project um, um, maps, and then draw.io for designing your process flows, and of course, Trello, and of course, chat GPT, which is the AI that we are all using today, right? So first thing that every business analyst in our program gets to learn is Excel, Power BI, and SQL, right? And these are things that prepare you to be able to understand the data aspect of business analyst, analysis. And that's why you can comfortably function also as a business data analyst. Because you already have you already have the data analytical tools like Excel, Power BI, and SQL. So I think someone asked in the chat box initially, what's the difference between business analysis and data analysts, right? So for a business analyst, there's someone that can you know be the bridge between stakeholders and be able to communicate, right? And they work and learn things like elicitation, right? They learn the software development life cycle. They learn um, process mapping. For example, I'll use um, the fashion industry. If, for example, you are, you are in the fashion industry and basically first thing that you do is sometimes is to go to market. When you go to market, you, you can, um, you know, you have to do market survey. Why is my screen not drawing? You want to learn market survey. So this is you going to market, right? You go to the market, and then from going to the market, you are going to see the trend of um, the designs that is currently existing. You've done your survey, you come back, you do your, you gather your user requirements. That's after possibly a customer is entering to your um, business and is telling you, okay, I want you to sew um, this for me, I want you to sew this for me. And you've gotten the measurements, you've measured the length, you've measured the height. And after gathering the user um, requirements, you enter into the design phase, right? So when I talk about data um, design phase, when I talk about business analysts, right? These are things that we all on daily basis do without actually knowing that we are applying business analysis principles. So after this design phase, you now have where you are done designing and you are pushing this to the customer to test what you've given them. That's the point where the tailor is giving back the clothes to you to test and after testing, if it's not correct, if the clothes did not fit, you come back to the design phase, right? But if it's correct and the clothes fit perfectly, you push to production. So this is process mapping. So basically, 
even our tailors that we see our on daily basis, our fashion designers are doing process mapping without them even knowing. That's why when someone wants to transition into business analysis and we ask, okay, what have you been doing? A person will say, okay, I had a business or maybe I had a shop or maybe I did this, I did that. What we also help you to do is to make sure that we look at what you've been doing before and be able to tell you how you can even apply it in your CV. So it will still show possibly you're a fashion designer. So in your CV, it's going to show that you are a business analyst for Chupu Emeka fashion industry. And you were able to do process mappings. We were able to do elicitations where you ask your customers questions. So these are all things that we are going to give you, right? So for every career you are currently in, there is a way that is still going to fit in into the tech uh, um, path that you're trying to do. So this is just using a fashion designer as an example to show you that these things can easily be done, right? So um, next one um, is, of course, uh, let me claim this. Okay. Let me claim this. Oh, wow. There's a couple of minutes so that I can be able to claim all this so that we can move ahead. So I'm convinced that right now, the people that asked, okay, what's the difference between a business analyst and a data analyst, we can comfortably understand and know what a business analyst does. And then I'm going to walk you through what a data analyst does, right? So this next one is the data analyst. So for our business analyst program, right, it's, it lasts for a period of um, four months where you do a massive classroom learning within two months and then you have two months internship where you get to work with amazing projects that will help you build up your portfolio. So moving to a data analyst, who is a data analyst? There are two questions that a data analyst answers and that's descriptive analytics and then diagnostic analytics. And that's basically what happened and why did it happen? For example, if we um, bring the attendance that everyone here has filled and give it to a data analyst, the data analyst is going to look at it and say, okay, um, during the um, masterclass held on 7th of February that we had um, 40 people join us from UK, we had 10 people from Africa, um, we had uh, maybe two people from Asia. So what the company is going to look at, okay, the, what happened? We've answered the question of what happened. Then why did it happen? Then the data analyst will now start saying, okay, we, we pushed our adverts possibly to only the UK side, and that's why we had that improved number. And for Nigeria, for Africa, we didn't really push the ad, and for Asia, we didn't do any ad at all. So these are the reasons why we had all those turnouts. So this is basically what a data analyst is going to do. They are responsible for analyzing and interpreting data to generate insights that is going to help the company to make business decisions. And for you to be in our data analytics program, you get to learn, of course, first of all, problem solving. Because you need to have that positive mindset that, oh, I can use the um, crisp DM to solve this problem, right? I can use this um, exact framework to solve this problem. And after it, you move to Excel, you move to Tableau, you move to Power BI and SQL, and of course, ChatGPT, which is for analytics, and then Microsoft Fabrics for analytics. And for you to learn data analyst, uh, analysis with us, it's, uh, it goes for a period of four months where you have a massive three-month learning that you are going to learn with case studies. So it's not a classroom where you're going to come in and we're telling you what is data. Data is this, no. From the first day you're joining the class, you are working with real life case studies so that you will use all these learnings in the classroom to build up your own portfolio. And still, when you move to the internship stage, you still have ample data to work with that will help you optimize your portfolio and you know be able to tell um, recruiters, oh, I worked on this project, I worked on this project. So by virtue of being in those internships, you have data from different sectors, from financial sector, from health sector, from um, energy sector, and you can comfortably talk about what's going on in these industries without you being presently there. So for HR analysts, right? HR analysts are people that basically look at the data that the HR functions have generated and be able to optimize the HR process, employee performance and talent management or any other thing that HR does. They will look at data and they will optimize it from there. So they are basically data analysts that work in the HR functions, right? 
data analysts that have optimized their, their HR um, analysts, uh, HR, HR skills. And of course, they're still going to learn everything that um, uh, tools that a data analyst is, which is still problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL, that structured query language for your database management. And then you move into proper HR analytics. That's HR analytics and performance evaluation, HR metrics and life cycle, HR analysis and dashboarding, then collaboration and report automation. Because as a HR, you always build reports that you're going to give to management. You're going to build maybe reports on the attrition rates, possibly your attrition rate is at 5%, which means you are doing where people are not really leaving your company. We still have to analyze, but why are these people leaving my company, right? I'm still going to do performance evaluation that you're still going to use data analytical skills to build your model for that uh, performance evaluation. And of course, you are going to still work with ChatGPT for analytics. So for our HR program, it goes for a period of four months where you also be in the class and have a massive case study-based learning for three months and then you also do internship for one month. So the next is financial analytics, right? And these are financial analysts that evaluate financial data of companies. They are there to look at the data that the company has generated and they will provide insight on the financial performance. They're going to tell the company, okay, because of um, um, this, maybe our OPEX increased by 10% in the Q1 because we improved uh, on, on um, what's it called, capital projects. Maybe the company is looking to expand and they are now you know, putting hands in capital projects. That is why their OPEX, that OPEX operating expense is going high. And then if the company in capital expenditure, we are going to um, make this so to so and so at the end of the year, which means we need to apply break, right? So a financial analyst is going to look at the financial health, the financial data, and be able to provide insights to management and be able to give insightful business financial data. And of course, as a financial analyst, you get to work, you still get to do problem solving so that you can understand the problem you are trying to solve. You are still going to work with Excel for analytics. You are still going to work with Power BI for your visualization and then SQL, structural query language for your um, database. And then you are going to pivot to accounting fundamentals and then financial analysis, financial modeling, valuation, sensitivity, and scenario analysis, where again, to build models that will tell you, okay, if we increase price by 5%, how does it relate to the other aspect of our businesses, right? Which means if you are touching price by 5%, that means revenue is going to grow by maybe some margin, and then um, our operating expense is going to drop, and in the end, profit is going to be so so and so. And then maybe our profit margin, we're trying to make it to be uh, maybe 30%. And from there, you can build models that is going to guide you to be able to achieve these things. And for the financial analytics program, it goes for a period of four months as well with a massive classroom learning of three months and then an internship period of one month where you get to also build your own portfolios that is going to enable you become a full financial analyst. And then data scientists, remember that I said that data analyst, analysts, the answer to the question, which is what happened and why it happened. Now, a data scientist is there to look at the, is going to use machine learning and predictive models to make sure that, okay, this is what's going to happen and predict what will happen in two or three years. If the company continues doing that, what happened, this is what it's going to resort to, right? It's going to look at, um, if you continue using this exact why happened, that's the diagnostic analytics, then that means in two or three years, this is what um, we are going to be having. Right, so things that you're going to learn basically are still uh, you're going to use tools like Excel, Power BI, SQL, Python, and then machine learning, computer vision, GitHub version control, Chat GPT, and of course Microsoft Fabrics for data analytics. And for our data science program, it goes for four months where you have a massive classroom learning where you get to work with models with data. And the truth is that our our um data that you work with are all real life based case studies so what we try to do is that when we get um some contracts some jobs from companies and stuff like that we work with um um the data but that's what we call um we pseudify them that and codify it that okay you're seeing uh maybe a data from uba and then you're going in the in the we won't present it to you you're going to be seeing something like okay an xyz bank presented this data and this and this happened, then possibly the names there are going to change everything. It's going to be codified fully for data privacy sake. If you are in the UK, 
I think we'll have things like um, GDPR, that general data protection um, regulation. If in Nigeria, they're going to be um, doing all these things because of NDPR or NDPA, that's Nigeria Data Protection Act. So these things, you get to work with real life data that are codified. So you are still practicing in that exact financial space. You are still practicing in that exact oil and gas space. You are still practicing in that exact um, health uh, hospitality space, but you are using codified data. And these are things that will help you build your portfolio. That when you come for interview, you can comfortably talk on things that relate to um, hospitality, things that relate to um, oil and gas, things that relate to finance, because you've worked with data from there. Now, remember I told you um, who a data engineer is? They're basically like plumbers that connect pipes in their apartments. That's what um, data engineers do, right? So they tend to build uh, models. They tend to build pipelines that connect the data from the front end to the back end. So at the point that uh, maybe you are, you are using your phone and you are trying to uh, possibly generate your account balance, once you are putting in the account balance, then it's working through a pipeline, going to the database and selecting what you requested for and giving it to you in front. So these are things that the data engineer builds. They will do end-to-end -end projects where possibly you connect database to um, APIs and be able to scrape data and make it available to people in-house to work with. So it's basically data, data engineers are responsible for designing, constructing, and maintaining infrastructure that allow for the storage and retrieval of data. So this is basically what data engineers do. And you get to work with tools like um, SQL, Python, PySpark, AWS, and then GitHub. And you're going to learn the key learning areas are, of course, introduction to data engineering. Remember, our programs run from beginner phase to the expert level, right? That's why you always see the first thing in each of the programs is introduction to this introduction to that. So we we'll walk you from level one, from your ground of unknown to the level of the known. So you learn things like introduction to data engineering, SQL, Python programming, Linux, building custom ETL pipelines where you have to build end-to-end -end projects and script maybe a web database, right? And also Apache Spark, Apache Airflow, AWS Cloud Engineering, version control, and of course, ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot. Our data engineering program runs for a period of five months, right? Where you have a massive classroom learning of three months and internship um, period where you get to work with um, real life case studies for two months as well. Then the Scrum Master, like I always say, these guys are the easiest pathway to the tech ecosystem, right? And what they do is amazing. They are like the coach for all Scrum teams. So for any, prog any project that any companies try to flow, um, float, there's always a scrum team that uses um, agile methodologies to make sure that this project goes smoothly. And basically the scrum master is there to make sure that they're using those agile methodologies. How are they doing their um, daily scrum? How are they doing their sprint planning? How are they doing their backlog, um, you know, filling their backlog as well? These are things that the scrum master is there to make sure that they work hand in hand with the product owners team members, and then also respond to the stakeholders, that the CEOs, the CFOs, the COOs, all the O's you can think of. That's where um, the Scrum Master also reports to. So basically, as a Scrum Master, I get to work with tools like Jira for tracking projects and, and deliverables, and of course, Trello for collaboration. And the key areas you're going to learn is basically, you're going to start as well with introduction to Scrum. Then you learn the Scrum team and Artifact, which is your product backlog, how do you build your product backlog? For example, if um, you want to make jello fries and for you to make the jello fries, what are the things that you're going to need for them? That's um, you getting your rice, you getting your pepper, you getting your onion, you getting all those things you're getting uh, your product backlog. And these are things that a Scrum Master is going to make sure, okay, we'll have these things in our product backlog. For example, if you want to build um, maybe a dating app, things that will come to you, okay, how do I build um, the front end how do I get my user gathering? How do I get my user cases? So these are things that you put in your product backlog. So after you've listed everything that you need to get that product on, you now pick one of them and push into uh, sprint planning. And these are things that the Scrum Master are there to use Scrum methodologies and make sure that you they guide the, um, everybody in the Scrum team to achieve things that they want to do. And of course, after you're done 
with the training, you can easily write your PSM exam and be a certified um, Scrum master. And the learning timeline for our Scrum class is just two months, right? It's just two months. And it runs, it has an, a massive classroom learning of one month and an internship period of one month where you also get to work on real life projects. That's why I always consider Scrum Master as easiest for us to take because that's one you learn in two months. And then in one month classroom, you're already pushing to get um, jobs. And then, you know, before you know it, you're already in the tech ecosystem, right? And the last one, of course, is the cyber security. So a cyber security expert, like I said before, basically is a professional that plays the role of protecting the organization's data. As all these other guys are working with data, someone needs to be at the back end to also make sure that this data is protected. So they, of course, the first thing you're going to learn is introduction to cybersecurity, where we introduce you to cybersecurity, of, uh, where we learn, get to learn the um, CIA triad. That's the foundation of cybersecurity, that's confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? That you need to understand. These are pillars that cybersecurity is built on. Before you now start moving into foundations of computing and network and information security principles, where you get to learn um, some ISO standards, ISO 27001, that talks about information security and offensive and defense, defensive security. So basically, defensive security is you trying to build um, you know, um, defense measures that is going to block threats from entering. Then offensive um, security, cyber security is now you, the aspect of you doing um, pen tests, you doing vulnerability tests to assess whether your system is penetratable, right? These are things that you get to learn in the cyber security class. And of course, cryptographic basics, cyber threats and attack vectors, network security, how do you protect your network, endpoint security, web and application security, the web pages that are visiting, the application that have been built, how do we secure them? Cloud security, incidents reporting and forensics, and of course, cyber security policies and compliance. You get to also work with tools like um, Wireshark, VMware, SQL, Python, Metasploit, and Bob Suite, right? So these are things that we give you. For four months, you can easily transition from your current field to a full-time cybersecurity analyst. And you're going to have like a three-month immersive classroom learning and then a one-month internship period where you get to work with real-life cases. I can see a couple of questions in the chat box. Just hang on. Once these things are over, you are those questions are going to be answered fully. We are going to answer them. And please, if you've not filled your attendance, try and uh, fill it so that you can also get this slide at the end of the session so you can you know go through it and also make your decision but this will also uh, this will only get to people that filled those like those uh, attendance sheets so once you fill it my colleague i am just dropped in the chat box once you fill it you are going to get the slide and you are also going to get the recording of the session so that you can easily assess and look at everything with yourself so why should you train with us, right? All these things I've been saying, why should you train with us? So in 2023, we had great achievements, right? Where we helped close to a thousand people transition from classroom into their first job in the tech ecosystem across UK, US, Canada, Africa, Asia, and Europe, of course. And these are people that we know, right? We, we, on, on a monthly basis, we train people that runs across 300. And this year in, year out, these people get jobs. And these are just people that we know that got jobs, right? Now, why should you train with us? There are five basic reasons why you should train with us. And number one is up-to-date curriculum. Everything that I've mentioned here starts from the basic level and moves you to the expert level. So if you're going to learn something like um, cybersecurity, you start with learning the introduction to cybersecurity. Why is cybersecurity even important? Then you learn the uh, foundation, which is CIA triad. Of, and before you move into industry expert and hands-on experience, where you now start working with tools, Bob Suit, VM, uh, VMware, Wireshark, to help you understand the exact um, course that you are doing. And of course, blended training delivery to accommodate everyone. Our training program, the way I'm talking to you right now, is the way someone is going to be training you in class. And of course, the recordings will be also, the video on the course we recorded, that after the session, you can easily go to your Google Classroom and watch everything. And you all you will have lifetime access to this classroom for you to be able to watch as many times as possible. Maybe on the job, you forgot something, you can easily come back 
and also watch on how you can do all those things. And we have employability services that will provide where we'll talk about your CV review, your upwork, upwork optimization, your LinkedIn um, review, and so many other things that we'll still get into. And we have the internship designed to simulate the real work environment, right? Where you get to work with projects that is also real life um, based. And all these five processes basically to result in making you an industry ready tech professional that is going to move mountains in the tech ecosystem. Now, how do we position you in the job market in three layered approach, right? Just in three approach, that's the way we get to make our students to be presentable in the job ecosystem, in the job market. And number one in that level, of course, is your CV review session, right? We have CV review sessions where we look at your CV, we prep you on how to do your CV, and then we teach you on how to do job match so that you don't use the same CV that you've been using to apply to job, um, data analysts to also apply for a data scientist role. So these are things that we put you through. And of course, LinkedIn optimization, where you get, we get optimized on LinkedIn. Because recruiters, once they are, are scouting you, first place they look for you is on LinkedIn. And when they come there and um, you apply for a role in possibly um, data analysts, and they come to LinkedIn, you are seeing um, someone that's in Chukwemeka, and Chukwemeka is doing something in music. I know seeing that the alignment is not there. So we are going to also teach you this level one of LinkedIn optimization and then upwork optimization, where you also get to freelance in the tech industry and get all those um, you know, gigs for you to you know, improve your financial health. And then we also walk you through how to navigate the job market. And of course, the interview prep sessions, right? Uh, the way whenever you get a job, you can easily prepare. I think tomorrow we even have sessions for people in-house where um, it's going to be like um, we've created jobs and we've asked them to apply. So tomorrow is going to be like um, they are in, in, on interviews, right? And we're going to be asking them questions like, okay, um, Chukwemeka, can we, can we get to know you? So that these people are going to have like a real life simulation of how job interviews function. And then they are going to be corrected. They're going to be taught on how to proceed, right? So these are things that we do. And of course, if you get a job or if you need recommendation and reference letter, we also provide these things for you. Now, level two, which is basically on weekly mentorship session. So we have mentorship sessions where we talk about the general things to experience out there. And uh, we also bring um, alumni that pass through the system to come back to classroom, people like Amy, people like Effie, people like Nathaniel, to come back to classroom and talk to us, talk to the students on, okay, this was how I navigated my own journey. This was the challenges I faced. This was how I was able to surmount it. They also get to tell you, okay, um, a day in the life of a data analyst, right? Where you get to understand what they experience out there in the job already. And of course, we have on the job, one month on the job support, where if you get a job and you still am um, struggling and you need help and assistance to you know, balance, we are also there to guide you and make sure that you succeed. And the most important level, which is level three, is the our, our promise to you, which is basically that we are guaranteeing you one job interview after you are done completing your training with us, right? We are guaranteeing you one job um, interview after you are done training with us. So once you are done with the program, everything you've passed through our additional employment services, we guarantee you that you must get an interview prep. And that's one thing that we always you know, boost our past because we have testimonials to back it up. We have testimonials to always say, okay, these are things that we've done in the past and it resulted in this. Now, what are the additional things that we've added this 2024? I've already talked about the body mentorship program where we invite the old alumni to come back to the class and be able to talk to the current students on how um, they were able to navigate their own time. And these are things that is going to help you build up your skills, I know, get you job ready. So that once you get into the job, you can easily, you know, look backward from what you've learned from your body mentors and easily apply it on the job. And we've also improved our internship experience where you now get up to um, months of experience of working with real, real life data and improve your portfolios. And we have partnership with recruiters across UK, Canada, Africa, people like Robots Have, Adinash, Micropage, where we have pool of students. Now, when these guys reach out to us, oh, we need a data analyst. We are going to look through our system and be able to say, oh, Chukwemeka functioned perfectly. He's done his capstone project in the past. Now let's push Chukwemeka to robots half. 
to be able to be um, you know interviewed for by them. Now join our next cohort that is starting on the second of March. Our next cohort is starting on the second of March, and uh, this is just uh, February. We always start um a cohort every new um Saturday, right? Every first um Saturday of the month, we start a new cohort, and we are starting the next one on the second of March. And like I said, I have an amazing gift for everybody that have stayed till the, this time, and that is a discount. Well, I'm giving everyone that stayed on this call to this point discounts of for the ten, first 10 people that's going to register for any of the programs that we offer. And for data analytics, business analysis, HR analytics, financial analytics, full stack data science, it goes for the sum of $750. That is the normal price, right? £725 and 900000 Naira. But we, but by virtue of you being on this course at this moment, I'm giving you a discounted amount of six hundred dollars, five hundred pounds, and then seven hundred twenty thousand naira. And the beauty of this is that you don't have to pay once, right? Because um, what people always do, okay, I have this amount. We've structured it in a way that you can always lock down the discounted price, right? So you can make a first payment of four fifty dollars or 375 pounds or 540,000 naira to lock down the discount amount. Then one month into your training program, you can now comfortably, you know, make payments of the remaining amount of $150, 125 pounds, and then 180,000 naira. And of course, for data engineering and cybersecurity, it goes for uh, the amount of $900, 750 pounds, and 1 million 80,000 naira. But by virtue of you being on this call to this moment, the discount also exists for you, which is $750, 725 pounds, and 900,000 naira. And you can also make first payment and second payment of $550, 460 pounds, and 660,000 um, naira. And the last, which is Chrome Master, goes for uh, the amount of $450, 375 pounds and 540,000 naira. And of course, there's also a discount for you there. You can make payments of $350 and you are instantly in the Scrum Master program. Or 295 pounds or 420,000 naira and you are in the, instantly in the class. And let me, let me be honest with you, what always happens um, when we hold programs like this is that immediately after the session, during the session, this program, this um, cohort gets filled, right? So I always advise people to make sure they lock down this exact amount that's currently existing by making payments of the first payment option. That's $450, depending on the program you are going to. Make that first payment to lock down that amount. And then you can easily, you know, one month into the program, you can easily, you know, make payments for the other um, one. So uh, uh, my colleague, Aimo, is going to drop the payments. He's going to try and walk us through how to make these payments, right? I'm going to walk us through how to make these payments. So once you get the link and you click on it, I'm going to walk us through it right now. Who is excited to still be here? Yeah, who is excited, right? I know we are all still on the call. So um, can we, okay, I need to change the screen I'm sharing. All right. All right, my screen is coming up. To the, so once you get the link, you can easily see this um, analytics a Roman center, right? And once you get here, you can have access to all the program brochures that we offer. And you, will, you are going to see them here. And then, of course, you are going to see the amount for the payments. And then once you've made payment, you can come here and upload your receipts, right? Uh, I think there is a little bit of lag. Yeah, once you've made payments, you can come here. So this, and for you to make payment, uh, my colleague will also drop these payments options. So if you're making transfer to our pounds account, 
you can you have it here the wise bank and then you also get the source code and of course the account number and the account name the analytics make sure the account name is the analytics and it is wise bank and then if you are making um, non-nera card payments you can easily click on any of these and then you can make your card payments right once you click on any of these programs it's going to take you to the exact program and you are going to select it and make payments and of course we have um, the also the um nara card payments that can click here to see all the programs that we offer and then you make payments but if you want to make a direct transfer to our naira account you see here also you see the fidelity bank account with account internalities which my colleague is going to drop in the chat box and you can easily also make payments remember once you've made payments to any of these through any of these means any of these processes always come back to this point and upload your receipts here always come back to this point and upload your receipts as simple as that okay so that is it it's very very easy for you to make payments and be able to become part of the analytics family i know a lot of people have been asking in the comment section how do i join how do i join this is it this is how you get to join i don't know whether we we'll have questions at this point if you have questions just um with a show of hand just raise your hand and i am going to call you to speak remember the discount is just for the first 10 people to register so if you have question this is your time <clears throat> you can raise your hand or you can drop it in the chat box and i will pick it for there okay very insightful session i'm excited how much is the fee I believe I've touched all this. How much is the fee for data analytics? It's fantastic. I've touched it. How much is the fee? I've touched on it. So if we have any question, please raise your hand so that I will ask you to unmute and we are going to take your questions immediately. Do you have any question from anyone? Any question from anyone? Abiodun, Abiola, Ajiri, BIB, Babatunde, if you have any question, please, all right, send me, send the link to join after payment. So um, in Naya, basically once you have made payments and you've filled and, um, the place for, please send the link to make payments. I'm more, please, can you drop um, the link for making payments in the chat box, please? I'm more, can you drop the link for making payments in the chat box? I'm right there, Priscilla, are you there? Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Aymoa. Are you guys there? So, guys, yeah, my can hear you. All right, please drop the link for the payments on the chat box. All right, um, so uh, Frederick, um, please ignore the deadline. That was um the one for um people that joined the February cohort. So for the March cohorts your deadline will still be released which is basically 29th of february that's the deadline for anybody that wants to join the march cohort to make payments right but remember the discount is not fully there for everyone once the 10 people fills each of those programs the, that discount is off and that's where people that come um other times will not get things like oh you have to make the full payments because the 10 slots are already taken so I always advise people to try and make payments, at least use the um, the first option of payments, the first um, payment um, plan here and block out that um, discount that's currently existing. Use the first payment option. You don't have to make the full amount first. You don't have to pay, make the payment of discounted amount first. You can use the first payments and then you have locked that discount for you. And then one more thing to the program, you can now you know make subsequent um, payments. Somebody is asking how much. Um, so basically, um, Maureen, um, on my screen you can see the prices for all the programs that we offer at this discount of six hundred dollars, five hundred pounds, seven hundred twenty thousand naira for data analytics, business analysis, HR analytics, financial analytics, and data science. Right? But you can make payments of for the first payment, you can make four fifty dollars, you can make seven hundred seventy-five pounds, or you can make five hundred and forty thousand naira. And then one month into the program, 
you can now make the you know complete payment that is remaining for you so please if you have questions feel free to ask me i'm here to take your question will the classes session be fully done remotely yes christopher all the classes are fully remote right so it's fully remote and you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one session the way you're having it with me the facilitator is going to be talking to you and then the class is going to be recorded and you will have the google classroom where you also get to you know watch everything that is going on in the class and like um i forgot to mention our programs are basically on Saturdays and Sundays, right? Um, 11 a.m. West African time and 6 p.m. West African time for our brothers in diaspora uh, in U.S. and Canada. I think 6 p.m. Um, West African time should be around 2 p.m. or 12 p.m. In, 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 in Martin time, right? So basically, this is to accommodate everyone to be able to be in classes. So if your own time will allow you to be in the morning section, you will be there. And if it will allow you to be in the night session, you'll be there. So there are some programs that also go on on Sundays, programs like Scrum Master, programs like um, Business Analysis, programs like um, Data Engineering. It goes on on not, not Data Engineering and Cybersecurity. It goes on on Saturdays and Sundays where you have classes 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. And then on Sundays, you have classes from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays. I think I have a question in the chat box. Um, please go pay Naira. Okay, for you to make payments to Naira, um, I'm more, um, Priscilla, please drop the um, transfer account to our Fidelity Bank in the chat box so that people can easily make um, transfer to the Fidelity Bank account. So in Naira, someone is going to drop the payments, um, the bank account, Fidelity Bank account with account name analytics in the chat box for you to be able to make your transfer. Yes, Priscilla just dropped it right now. So you can easily see if you're making transfer with pounds, you have the Wise Bank, you have the sort code there. If you're making transfer in Naira, you have the Fidelity Bank account with the account names, Tenalytics. All the account names are Tenalytics. What assistance do you provide to folks who are not quite sure of their interests? How do you help them to learn which costs you them best? Fantastic dumps. So what we do is, um, once you've, uh, you've made payments, or you are still constrained to make payments, right? We have clarity sessions. We are going to have one-on-one -on -one discussion with me, one-on-one -on -one discussion with people, um, experts in the field, uh, founders and people. We are going to have in-house people available for you where we get to ask you questions, okay, which course did you study? What are you doing at the moment? So that we can understand the best field for you to pivot into DOMS. So these are things that we do. So make sure you fill the attendance sheet and then you can still provide the option that you want to, uh, you know, have a clarity call with us. And we are going to, you know, invite you to that call where you be, we'll have lesser people, maybe 10 to 15 people where we'll have a one-on-one -on -one connection so that we'll, be, we'll understand you best and um, you know, know how to help you. But what I always advise people to do, Doms, is to, um, you know, make sure you use this first payment option to, you know, lock down the, uh, a price, the price and the discount that's currently existing. Then after you've locked it down, um, when you're uploading your receipt, you now select the option of, I want to speak to a professional, right? Uh, so that we will have this clarity session with you and be able to clarify everything that you need to know and help you select, select the program that best suits you. All right? I hope that answers your question, Doms. All right, please, if you want to um, speak physically, you can raise your hand and I'm going to ask you to unmute so that you get to talk to me and I also, uh, you know, understand your question clearly. So please, if you have any question, just raise your hand and I'm going to ask, uh, answer it. Hi, Babatunde. Hi, Chamaka. Christopher, I think you've asked. Clement has asked. Doms has asked. Um, Eyitope, hi. Hi, Fatima. Hi, um, Felicia. So please feel free to ask me questions so that we can help you understand how best for you to you know pivot into the tech ecosystem all right guys do we have any question from anyone discount for students please florence madukwe yeah florence discounts already exist there right like i said 
for the first 10 people to make payment, they're going to get these discounted prices, right? But after the 10 slots are taken, the prices are going to revert back to the original price. And this is something that always happens after most of these sessions because we have people, 80, 60 people, and when 10, 10 people make payments to any of the programs, the discounts are over, right? So always try to take advantage of it and make payments immediately these things are being said. Use the first payment option to lock down the pricing. And then one month into the course, you can make subsequent payments. All right, do we have questions from anybody here? All right, I know I promised us that I'm going to play a video um, for one of the, I'm going to play a video. So let me see the video that I'm going to play for us. I will still following. Hope we are still here. All right, so we are still here. Like I said, I like playing Fatima's um, video. No, Fatima, Ikmat. I like playing Ikmat's video. So let me get Ikmat's video. And then once you filled the attendance sheets, you will have access to all this. And then you can easily, you know, watch all this video in our YouTube and be able to, you know, make decisions yourself. All right. So it's coming up shortly. All right, please confirm when you can see my screen. How to get the most of Grammarly free. It's Kayla on behalf of Grammarly to tell you all about the free. Can you see my screen, please? Yes. All right. All right. I'm going to play now. Hi, everyone. My name is Ikmat. And um, I, I work with the Mind 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 Mind. Mind. Joining Ten Analytics has been the best decision so far. You know, for me, someone coming from a background of full housewife, because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years, and then wanting to break into something new wanting to go back into work into the workforce you know wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities so it was a lot and then i'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me better opportunities and then i'm glad i took it and then <clears throat> uh also the advice of do not sell yourself short that if he, it's always the it's very very valid because place yourself right you know don't sell yourself short it's a very 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 valid advice you know internalytics they will hold your hands like a child you know through through the models you have to you have the opportunity to go back and study you have the opportunity to go back and practice you have the opportunity to ask questions you know we have people you can always go back to even outside of class class hours it's, it's the most amazing experience so far really and then another thing is the uh, interview prep guys that is another very important thing i did my interview prep with mr muhammad and it's the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future he knew what was going to be asked and i'm glad that i took i wrote down all the things he mentioned i went back to practice and then when it was time for the interview it was like everything he was mentioning everything he mentioned it was just they kept on and then when i was answering those questions i was so confident you know because i already practiced i did an excel test i did a math test and then they were really impressed and another thing is guys it may not come as fast as you expect definitely you are going to get some news and then you may begin to think you're not good enough you are good enough yes the news will come but always take it as a basis for learning and development because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews. And yes, it worked. It really worked for me because I got my first job three months into the program, my first job. But I couldn't take up the job because I was still, there was a student and I was really eligible to, do, to work 20 hours. So I couldn't take up the job. Three months later, I got two jobs with full visa sponsorship. And guys, 
all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses I got. So yes, the no's will come, but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best, best, and the best thing that ever happened to me. And then yes, um, and they are the uh, most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. And that's a very good advantage. So yes, the analytics for the win. It's fantastic. Hi everyone, my name is Ikmat. And so like I always say, um, Ikmat, um, she was a full full time star home mom, right? And she was able to transition from that into the tech ecosystem as a data analyst and got a full visa sponsorship, right? And this can be you if you take that um, leap of um, that action to move from your exact um, limitations into the tech ecosystem. So I don't know whether there is a question from anyone before we call it a day, any question, clarification, or things that you want me to answer, please use the raise hand icon so that I can easily clarify you before we call it a day. Any question from anyone? Okay, I believe we all, okay, yes, please, Frederick. Okay, Frederick, I'm going to ask you to unmute so that you can speak to me, all right? Hi, Frederick. I've asked you to unmute. Please speak to me, Frederick. Hi, Frederick, are you there? Hi, Maureen. I've also asked you to unmute so you can speak to me as well. Hello, Chuku America. Hi, Frederick. Frederick yeah. speaking. All right, go ahead, please, Frederick. Well, mine is more of an appeal. I was wondering if the um, number of uh, discount people can be extended. I don't know if there are people in, in the house that share the same thoughts with me. <laughs> All right, that, that's a fantastic thought, Frederick, but you understand how um, business sometimes, you know, need to be able to limit their exposure sometimes because we've also done our own data analytics in-house and we've seen, okay, these are the level of exposure that we can go as a business, right? And that's what prompted some of these um, decisions. But what I always advise is if um, that first payment option of um, making that payment to, you know, hold that discount doesn't work for you, can always send an email to us and we can you know structure something that will work right so um okay. priscilla please drop elijah's email so that yes, um, frederick can email elijah and then okay. we can have um discussion and he can tell us how we can you know be of assistance easily but all right some, frederick, some, I'm looking some, some of us are, are stuck we can't make payment till it's daybreak and one goes to the bank uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I understand. So just um, email Elijah or okay. um, yeah, just email Elijah and, and all these things are going to be easily, uh, you know, arranged and worked out. Okay. Okay, so, I'll, I I'll be waiting for the email. All right, let me confirm whether they've dropped the email. Hi, Priscilla, are you there? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've seen it, Elijah. No, 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 no. That, that's not the email, please. That's not the email. That oh, is okay. not the email. Okay. The only email you're going to get will have analytics at the end yes, so I'm going to drop analytics.org exactly 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 all right so i'm going to drop it yeah that's it please email to all right elijah at analytics.org all right i've dropped it in the chat box so um you can have discussions pertaining to uh, uh any payment structure that you want to make all right thank you for that frederick you I think, um, Maureen, Maureen, your yes. hand is raised. Please, you have the floor. Yes, yes. Uh, my question is um goes like this, you know, and uh, with the kind of job I'm doing right now, that's the number one question. I'm a novice when it comes to tech. I've never, for once, I don't have an idea about this. I just came across it today, and um I decided to like kill into this. 
So now for someone who is a novice, I'm, do, how am I going to cope with this course? That's number one. Number two, uh, with my, my job is so demanding and um, coming into tech, I don't know how I'm going to like mesh both of them together. But I've heard a lot of stories when it comes to tech. So I was like, let me give it a try and see how it goes. But coming to see the money now, move me off my feet. All right, thank you for that um, question, Maury. Maury, do you, do you mind sharing um, um, if you've selected any of the programs you want to go with? Um, I selected, um, I think it was data analyst, but seeing that money, I don't think I can. All right, uh, but did you, did you get to see the average salary that you also get to make? Yes, yes. And when you are talking about the yeah. average salary, so all, all this yes, I saw it. Um, um, uh, is this job going to done remotely? All right. Um, um, if you get the slides, um, you get to see some of our past students that are still in Nigeria okay. and are working for companies in US, right? They're in Nigeria working for companies in US, in UK, mm -hmm. in Canada, right? So these are things that you yeah. can also get if you decide that's the route that you want to, you know, be in. And of course, there's also the, um, because we do upwork optimization, where you can also decide that you want to freelance in the tech market, where you get to be in Nigeria and you have any contract jobs, they just do and then it's over. So it's totally on you to decide how you want to, you know, make use of the skills that you've gathered. Now, coming to um, the um, demanding aspects of your current job, um, basically what I'm going to tell you is that the, the classes are always recorded, right? So even if you you we are not able to meet up the normal class, you will okay. have access to the classroom where you get to watch the recordings, right? And we also have what okay. we call drop-in sessions where within the week, right? In the night like this, possibly within the space of 9 to 10 or 10 to 11, the facilitator will also come and ask questions. Okay. Like you join a session where you ask questions pertaining okay. to the last videos that you watched. Right. So from there, he is going okay. to clarify okay. any question that you had if you were not in class and you're not able to join um, that drop in sessions. I don't know that does that makes sense, Maureen. OK. All right. Yes, Thank you does. so much. It does. All it right. doesn't. It does make sense. But I hope very much hope that the payment that we're going to make, according to how you are going you, uh, with the testimonies I've heard that you are going to hold our hands as a novice. You are going to hold our hands. You are going Definitely to really deliver according to the payment that was made. Because Definitely a lot of more. people, they just do a lot of, you know, marketing strategy, do all the talk. But when you come to the lecture class, ah, my God. So, like, Mori, what, Mori, what, 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 what I would advise you to do is um, if you can go to our YouTube channels, you have access to okay. most of our past students that they are testimonials that they are dropping every day on those channels, right? And these are people that do it willingly. So we, we've distinguished ourselves in this um, ed tech industry that our work speak for us. You know, there is a level of um, reputation you have is now people that are going to be marketing for you. And that's, I don't know whether you were at the beginning of the session. No, I don't think so. All right, we, we initially had SPA students that came. Uh, we had um, Nathaniel, we had Effie, we had Ini that came to talk about how their own time was. And um, someone like um, Ini, Ini just went for an interview. He just finished his own program this January. He went for an interview for a managerial role. And after it, they were asking him whether he can function as the CEO. Like he came for a managerial role, but they gave him the position of the CEO. So, and this, this actually sounds like something that is not possible, right? That's why we normally bring in these students to be able to talk to you so they can hear it from the horse's mouth. And you can also make your research on the company the person is working in and see that this person is actually the CEO at the moment, right? So we've distinguished Hello. ourselves. Hello. And we've made... Is, is CV really speak volume? Is I didn't hear the you. Guy's CV, I said the guy's CV speaks volume. Exactly. And before now, he remember he said that he'd not going for interviews and not getting anything. But after he was done with interview prep with us, CV revision with us, he now, the interview he got in January was bigger than all the interviews he's gotten throughout his um, career, right? And these are extra things that will provide to you, aside giving you the skill, 
data analytics, business analytics, we still do all those CV review session, LinkedIn optimization, Upwork optimization to also prep you for what you need to say during all those sessions. So we are not only playing in the skill acquisition space, we also give you the extra um, curricular uh, skills that you need, the interview skills that you need for you to be able to play well in the job market, Maureen. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Maureen. I don't know whether we'll have other questions. Um, Melvin is asking how much. Um, Melvin, uh, so for data analytics, business analytics, HR, financial analytics, and data science goes for um, the pricing of six hundred dollars, five hundred pounds, and seven hundred twenty thousand naira. And these are all discounted prices. As well for data engineering and cyber security, that goes for seven fifty dollars, six twenty five pounds, and nine hundred thousand naira. And then Scrum Master that goes for three hundred fifty dollars, two hundred ninety five thousand pounds, two hundred ninety five pounds, and four hundred twenty thousand naira. Remember. It's always very, very important that we try to take advantage of the discounts and key in for the first 10 people that register for those um, programs. Because once the 10 is filled, we'll revert back to the normal pricing. What I always advise people to do is to make the first payment to lock down the pricing. And then one month into the program, you can now make the second payment to complete it fully. All right. I don't know whether there is any other question. I'm new to everything. No, I don't come back. I see the data analysis. Fantastic, Timmy. Timmy Oba, you can do the data anal analytics, right? So our programs are structured in a way that we start from the beginner phase and work you to the expert level. So in the classroom, we have people that have diverse idea of what's going on, but we collapse everyone to the step one, which is working you into introduction into that exact program, right? From there, we now get to advance you step by step to the other um, requirements. All right. I don't know that we have other questions that requires um, me to clarify, but please make sure you fill the attendance form so that you're going to get the recording of this session and you are also going to get the slides for you to also go through it yourself. Please make sure you fill in the attendance. I don't know that we have. Another question for me to clarify. Hi, I don't know. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but do you have anything you want to ask us? Hi, July Emi. Hi, Joshua. Hi, Mahmoud. Hi, Mary. Hi, Melvin. Hi, uh, Large J. Hi, Opalua. Hi, Peter. If you have anything that I want to ask, please feel free before we call it a day. Hi, TIA. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Uche. If you cannot, or if you don't want to um, unmute or raise your hand, you can drop it in the chat box and we are going to pick it from there. Thanks for the awesome presentation. Job well done. Thank you, Felicia, for that. I hope to see you in class because, okay, it will, be, um, it will not be an amazing thing that you've listened to fantastic presentation and you don't get to make use of it. Do you guys have office in Nigeria, Melvin? Okay, Melvin. We function from all across the globe, right? Uh, we have people in Canada, we have people in US, we have people in Nigeria, we have people in Ghana, we mm -hmm. have people in Saudi Arabia. So we are just scattered across the globe. And that's the beauty of technology, right? So all of us are in different spaces, but we all work for analytics and we all make things happen. So you are going to get see, and this, this is also part of um, why this is amazing because it's a global space. Right. So you also get to network with people across the globe. So, yeah, we are in Nigeria. Some of us are in Nigeria. Some of us are in UK. Which class do I teach? DOMS. DOMS, um, you, you get to see me in almost all the classes, right? If you get to register. I don't know whether I want to be in the class uh, I teach, but definitely you are going to see me in your class if you get to join the program, DOMS. All right, please, for someone who is an absolute beginner in the tech sector, come tell you, can that individual enroll in any of the programs? Yes, Christopher, even if we've had lawyers that transitioned from law to being a data analyst, to being a business analyst, right? We've had people that move from non-numerical um, disciplines into the tech ecosystem. So if a lawyer, we have people that even study agriculture, we have people that study languages, right? they also transition into the tech industry. So you really do not need to have that background, right? 
for um, initially, Effie mentioned that she studied microbiology. And after studying microbiology, she now did um, estate, um, real estate management, something like that. And she still transitioned into tech. What she said was that analytics is the degree she needed, right? I'll quote her earlier. Analytics is the degree I needed to transition. So analytics can also be the degree that you also need to transition into the tech ecosystem. Where is the attendance form? I did not see it. I joined late. All right, please. Uh, we will send the attendance form one last time and we are going to call it a day. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. small business session and i'm glad to and please make sure to fill out the attendance form so that if you have any clarification you can always get across to us thank you everyone and cheers please do have a wonderful one oh nice rest i think frederick has one more question for me so i'm going to take that and i'm going to draw the curtain hi Chukemka, do we get certifications like i i b a frederick like i mentioned the tech ecosystem works basically on competencies over certifications, right? So certifications are very important, but you're not going to get things like, okay, um, for it to be, uh, you need a Google data analyst for it to function, you need to be this, you need to be that. It's just few that require those certifications for you to function, right? But the first thing first is for you to get the competence, which is the skill. Places like maybe Scrum Master, I want to get PSM after you're done with the Scrum, learning the Scrum principles, learning the Scrum tools and skills. Or maybe in the cybersecurity field, where I want to get maybe Comptia Plus, or I want to get uh, maybe things like CISA after you are done with learning the skill. But it starts with getting the initial competency, getting the skill that you need to perform. So I hope that answers your question, Frederick. Thank you, every guy, everybody once more. And this is where I draw the curtain finally. Do have a wonderful night rest and I hope to see you in class very soon. Cheers, guys, and good night.